So will 2023 be another echo wave of business stress, business challenges? Obviously, 2020 and 21, in the middle of the pandemic, many businesses faced challenges, depending upon what industry you're in. Restaurants obviously were hit hard. Retail was hit hard. Some work from home online type businesses actually did pretty well depending on the size and industry you're in. But as the different cycles and echoes of challenges start to level out, will there be now a more ubiquitous and widespread challenging environment in 2023 and 24? The factors that indicate this are, first of all, you have supply chain, which hasn't gotten any better. You also have interest rates, which are going up. That can affect consumer appetites. You have the erosion, or more properly, the consumption of all the stimulus that hit the retail consumer over the last couple of years. All the stimulus checks, the low interest rates, now the Fed pumping money into the economy, ease of lending, all of that jump-started the economy in kept it going 2020 21 into 22 but now you have rents going up you have gas prices going up you have vehicle prices higher and you have supply chains which are still limited we talk to many businesses over um, every week everything from a small chocolate shop that had difficulty getting inserts for their boxes of chocolates to dealerships having difficulty getting vehicles Um, to general contractors getting lumber and materials, to card shops not being able to get small um, trinkets for travelers and tourists. All this is going to eventually have an effect on business success and business revenue. And here's an article um, from Business Insider that talks about how business leaders are facing a the stiff test in a generation. We're facing a perfect storm of high risk, low resilience world. And they did a survey. It says only 25% felt they were operating in a high risk environment. Well, that's still a quarter. This was before Ukraine. Right? So once this new environment kicks in, now you have some additional social conflict with the Supreme Court leak and other factors. All of these positives and negatives have cycled up and down over the last couple years and now most of the tools in the toolbox of the government have been used up. Low interest rates, can't do that anymore. Um, Incentive checks, can't do that anymore. There's no um, really tool left in a box. Maybe some student loan cancellation or discounting, that may um, ease the burden on some consumers, but it's not gonna put direct cash in their pocket. These have already been delayed and put on hold for the last two years. So it's not like they're gonna have a higher monthly budget by not paying student loans. Most of these loans aren't being paid already. So that's the only tool left in the toolbox and it's not gonna immediately put cash in the pockets of consumers. They're already paying more for gas and groceries and cars and rent and mortgage. So will businesses face a more across-the-board challenge in 2023? It's very likely it will. What can you do to prevent that or to deal with it? Well, if you're a business, you want to look at what things on your balance sheet are true expenses and which ones are investments. And that's an important distinction. Just because you spend money on something every month on your balance sheet, or more properly on your profit and loss statement, doesn't mean it's an expense. If you spend $500 on advertising and it makes you $10,000 in sales, that's not an expense, that's an investment with a return. If you spend $4,000 a month on an employee, but they enable your business to make $5,000 more in profit, then that's not an expense, that's an investment. However, If you spend $3,000 a month on 
a luxury employee that you really don't need, well, that's an expense. If you spend $800 on some subscription to a data product that really doesn't help you sell more, that's an expense. So it'd be a good time to go through your P&L, every line item in your chart of account, and see which ones are truly investments in more sales or lower expense and which ones are just luxury, a, a way to spend your profit. You don't want to spend money from your profit unless it's going to make you more profit. Just because you have a, a net profit of fifty or 60000 a month doesn't mean you should spend 10000 of it on something new. You should only spend the money if it's going to add on to your net profit. Not more sales, but net profit. Also, look at your insurances. Insurance coverages are changing. The insurance market and the insurance um, providers are finding new risk and new loss channels, and they're cutting some of the coverages on policies. Be sure to start looking at coverages with your insurer several months before your X date. So it gives your broker time to adjust to maybe a different market than what you had before. Look at things like your leases. When do they come and do? When can you negotiate with your landlord? Look at upcoming renewals on subscriptions. Many of the service providers over the last five or six years went to something as a service, whether it's software, advertising, where you have an annual contract. Look at those contracts coming up. Do you really need them? Do you need more of them? If it's doing well for you and you're making money off of that service, then buy more of it or get more from the provider. If it's not certain that it's providing any extra income, not revenue, but net profit, then maybe it's time to discard that because you want to be in a position to be prepared for a challenge before it happens. Because once it happens, it's a little bit too late. It's hard to adjust then. Plus, you have more time to put cash in the bank from that extra profit to carry you through or to pick up some business from maybe competitors who can't make it. Think about who your main competitors are. Even if they're not bigger than you, if they're smaller than you especially, those are the ones who may not be able to hang on. And if you can power through while they're struggling, you may find ways to take their clients, to intrude upon their business, or maybe even buy them out. Some companies that really have no value, you can buy just the mailing list or their customer list because they're gonna close anyways. It's not like somebody's going to buy their business if it's not net profitable. But you might be able to pay them a small nominal fee to have their client list, maybe their website, forward you their their leads or their phone number to get your phone calls. So now's the time to be prepared for this and contact your experts. You have a team of experts. You have accountants, attorneys, insurance agents, uh, maybe investigators. You have people that are within your expert field of your team of experts, I should say, that can help you see things in your blind spots outside your company that maybe your executive team doesn't see because they're all within your company working hard. Consider that when you're planning your next two to three years, yet all of you have a five-year plan, and see where looking at the best possible scenario and the worst possible scenario might have some of the same projected activities and you can put those in place immediately because if the same thing, if you would do the same thing if times are good or times are bad, just go ahead and do it. If you have to do something different, then maybe you can make a decision based on the probability of each one of those being true. Put your comments below. Let us know what you think.